how have you guys been faring in this quarantine? Well, um, we've been doing uh, all of our work remotely, kind of like everyone has. So we've okay. been spending a lot of time on Zoom. And then mm-hmm. when we're not on Zoom, uh, I'm personally in front of the television because uh, <laughs> I don't have kids. Harv has to raise children. Uh, yeah. Luckily, I do not. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's like, I'm, you know, you never leave the house and uh, it is it is draining. So is it um, now doing the, the work that you like working on things? Do you find it easier now with within this quarantine or was it better when, you know, you're able to leave and go places? Uh, I mean, I don't know root how you feel but I, I mean i think it's worse like it's it's harder so much of the stuff that i do is, is dealing with so many different artists from right. puppets to sets to animators and you know it's some things can move along through zoom but the practical hands-on stuff is a lot harder so um i find it you know frustrating I and mean, i understand you know we all we want to be safe of course but it's it uh definitely isn't it's not easy i'll say that much how do you feel, Tom? Um, it is, you know, I really, because, you know, in L.A., your commute uh, is everything. And I yeah. thought I'd be picking up, like, an extra hour of free time every day. And it, it really doesn't seem to work that way. No. <laughs> it's like, um, I don't know where that hour goes, but I'm not getting an hour more of work done. Um, and, no, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and also, it's like, like not being in a room with the other writers is, um, uh, you know, I miss it a lot more than I thought I would. Yeah. Um, so this, so this show, uh, Crossing Swords, uh, so on Hulu, and so it's about this uh, character Patrick, um, and the description is that Patrick is this good-hearted peasant who lands a coveted squire position at the royal castle, and his dream job turns uh, quickly turns into a nightmare when he learns that his beloved kingdom is run by a hornet's nest of horny monarchs, crooks, and charlatans. Um, now, I'm reading that, um, and it goes on to say, even worse, Patrick's valor made him the black sheep of his family, and now... His criminal siblings have returned to make his life hell. War, murder, full frontal nudity. Who knew brightly colored peg people led such exciting lives? Now, um, I first heard... Now, this this show was announced uh, back in, I think, 2018. Um, how long have you guys been working on this? Uh, well... Uh the, con- the con- conception of the show was uh, like eight or nine years ago. Oh, we had wow. the idea, yeah. and then um, it really didn't like seriously pick up steam until we partnered with Sony, and then uh, and then also with Hulu to distribute it. And I would say that that was like uh, like in the past two or three years. So yeah, I like. To- if it was announced in 2018, I can't re- I can't even remember when things happened anymore. But yeah, in the last three years, uh, when it all kind of pulled together. Um, yeah, I remember it being announced that Hulu was given um, the, the gave this ser- gave a series order for a first season consisting of ten episodes, and that was you know 2018. Um, and so from from that process and. Uh, those that are listening, we're on with John Harvatine, uh, or Harv, right? Uh, and yep. Tom Root. Uh, they are the creators of yep. Crossing Swords on Hulu. Um, uh, former executive producers uh, at uh, on Robot Chicken. And we are so when this show was announced, when from from the concept came and then it started to pick up steam and so from that point uh maybe let's say the show gets picked up and gets announced um where does your work begin after that um well the uh the first thing we need to do is uh well a lot of things happen simultaneously but from my perspective we need to figure out what the season is going to look like 
uh, as far as storytelling goes. And so, uh, you know, we hire writers, put a writer's room together and start coming up with uh, synopses of each episode and um, deciding what um, fun areas of our world we want to start exploring. Um, and as soon as we get that ball rolling, it helps inform a lot of other parts of the production. Uh, Harv, I don't know how you look at things when once we get a, a green light, but um, that, I mean, from my perspective, it's like we've got to get a blueprint of the, of the season uh, and, and where the stories are going to take us. Yeah. And, and while that's happening, the design starts, we start thinking about what are the characters going to look like, uh, what are the sets going to look like? What are the colors that we're going to play with in the world? So even though the script starts first and it takes the lead, right behind it is the design on the stuff that we know for sure we're going to do. Like we know we're going to do the main characters and we know there's going to be a castle. So uh, that's happening at the same time as the writing. So yeah, you said some things happened simultaneously. I know that they did, like, I guess when it, the show was announced, it was uh, some, some cast members had been announced. So... I guess that stuff kind of gets worked on all at once at some point when they start figuring out who's going to um, who's going to be on the show. Are there people that you kind of favor or you have in mind when you're when you're doing these creations? As far as cast? Yeah, as far as like have you, have you ever like thought about like all right, I'm doing this show, I would love this actor to, you know, voice this character. Yeah, one of the first people we thought of uh, was Luke Evans because he um, was so funny every time he did Robot Chicken and he was so game to do anything we asked. Like he was uh, the creature from the Black Lagoon singing uh, lead in a Van, like with a Van Halen song. <laughs> and like, like who knew that he could do that? And then I thought he was, awesome and um and like he would always make everything real like funnier than it was on the page and so um he was uh, one of our first um considerations for the king and uh thankfully he agreed to do it um which was was great and then uh like breck and meyer uh is one of our uh you know has been doing robot chicken as long as it has existed yeah. And um, and he is a regular on the cast, and then uh, of course Seth Green is a, a co-creator of Robot Chicken and an executive producer of Crossing Swords, and uh, he's on our cast as well, and he's invaluable. Yeah. And so we did have some ringers that we brought in, like where we knew we wanted them on the show, and then from there we filled it out with. Um, uh, we were really open to who the rest of the cast was going to be, and when we had an audition process. That's uh, you. Th- I mean, there's a spectacular c- cast here. I mean, it's Nicholas Holt, Luke Evans, um, yeah, Adam Pally, Tara Strong, Tony Hale. Um, and this is the uh, stop motion, right? And the characters are kind of based off of the uh, the the Fisher Price. Uh, the, the, in that same vein, those Fisher Price Little Tyke characters, which is like what I noticed immediately. But now it's, I see that, um, and from watching the uh, walkthrough earlier, the um, the characters are there. Is that like wood that they're made of? Yeah, all the all the characters are made completely out of wood, and the sets are all wood as well. So it's it's mostly wood. There's a little bit of cloth, a little bit of metal. But um, it's all like organic materials, and, and we chose that because not because we wanted to make our life harder, but because it just it looks cool, you know. Like the textures pick up some of the wood grains and imperfections, and uh, it was just a style choice that we thought looked great. And then you just kind of go down that road, and it's definitely harder to use wood. Wood can warp, and it's not as um, clean and perfect as plastic. But we kind of embraced that, and and I think it really helped make the show feel unique, and also just not precious, you know, like it's okay to have mistakes in there and go with it because it's, yeah. it's kind of funny. One of one of the, uh, I, so I'm, I'm watching and I'm, <laughs> I'm like, so people will look at this and it's clearly it's TVMA, the rating and I was like, and 
and uh, you know my um, my son he he looked at this thing he's like what's this and I was like not for kids <laughs> no <laughs> I was like not that is not it looks like it looks like it's for kids it is not for children um, but it was uh, it, it's kind of like this show was like kind of pushing the envelope there and I guess you can do a lot more with uh, those particular, you know, characters because it's, you know, animation or stop motion. And so what was, uh, um, did, did you, was your intention to have it like that? Uh, just like in, in that same vein as robot chicken with the edginess. Well, the, uh, because we wanted the show to be so, um, uh, you know, those, those toys, that they our puppets resemble are like are made for preschoolers. Yeah, <laughs> um, you know they're made for little hands that can't handle too many moving parts. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> so uh, they, we knew they were going to be cute and colorful, and we wanted that juxtaposition of like rated R comedy and violence on top of really cute preschool toys and. Um, and, and so that, that was the, the thought process behind it. Like before we even had a story, we yeah. knew we, we wanted the tone of the show to be TVMA for sure. Yeah. That, that actually, um, that actually makes it, that adds an extra level of comedy to it. Just, I mean, for me, I know maybe for a lot of people also, but that just that there are those toy characters, that's what for me that even that extends my laughter i'm i'm like it this is this will be funny in any other situation but it's even funnier because these are toys <laughs> i i saw you talk about earlier that some of the thing like when you're doing these shots and the like the budget constraints that you had um um now would you was it always the thought to let's do 10 episodes does like Hulu control like the number of episodes would you have liked it to be longer um well it's definitely Hulu gets the final call uh I think we had a little input like how long we wanted um like what we thought a good length of story would be for the first season <laughs> but um you know it's uh, it's uh, it's really what they what, what Hulu wants to present to the viewer as a satisfying season, especially when you're talking about um, binging an entire season. I think they have a length in mind, uh, so it's essentially their call. But I do think, like, um, if they had said it's going to be a 30 episode season one, uh, we might have had to push back and say <laughs> can't. Yeah, <laughs> we just can't. We physically can't do it. Um, That's a lot. Because I can imagine that it's a lot of work also, with the stop motion, right? Yeah, go ahead. That was oh, the yeah. saying. It's a lot of work with the stop motion. Yeah, it's just, yeah. Uh, and it's the time. Like at a certain point, the stop motion can't go any faster. Yeah. Than it goes. Um, there's just you hit these constraints in the production that nobody's been able to figure out. Like, even the big, expensive uh, movies that cost millions of dollars can't figure out how to make stop motion go any faster. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if there was a secret, somebody would have figured it out by now. And it's like, so if you want 30 episodes, that's great. It's going to take us three years. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, that's awesome. I, I do have a, to, I have a line here. Um, just from the the show, that's probably my favorite uh, line here um, from Patrick. And let's give a listen here. Hey, dragon! Ooh, I might smell like a virgin, but I taste like dynamite. <laughs> um, that scene where he's facing the kraken. Um, and what's uh-huh. and, and what's episode cracking episode, um, and it's that was like one of my favorite lines there. Um, 
and I thought it was hysterical and I was like this is the the raunchiness of this and then when I went to the next episode with the uh, with the princess who um with where the assassin showed up <laughs> and the uh like how she she walked in and she owned just kind of owned everybody and then the uh the these kind of things like it's like Patrick is supposed to be this uh uh, he wants to be this squire uh, or aspiring to be this hero type, and then he keeps just kind of messing things up. Um, do you now? Do you think that um, this like do, do you guys already have an idea? Because I watched through the the season. Do you have an idea of how you want to start the next process of like going into a season two? Well, I think like if we get. A season two and beyond, like hopefully we get a bunch of seasons. Most, most definitely, well, that I would think. be nice. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like, um, you know, it, it's all about following Patrick on this journey and seeing what shape that journey takes. Um, you know, he wants to. He sees that the kingdom needs help. He sees that the people in charge of the kingdom are corrupt. And he wants to do something about it. Yeah. Um, right now, he thinks the best way to go about it is to be a knight. But, um, you know, maybe maybe that's true. Maybe being a knight will let him help people. But maybe there are other ways he's going to find to help the kingdom that it would work better. And uh, we need to follow him and, and see what he decides. Um, um, and also, I mean, he it's impossible to be around corruption and not let it affect you and change yeah. you. And, and so Patrick's going to struggle with that as well. So it's all about uh, Patrick and his, uh, this journey that is going to take through this, through this uh, kingdom and how it, it affects him. And, uh, you know, he's going to be different every time, uh, every season uh, we check in on him. He's going to be a little bit different. Oh, we'll wrap it up here. Thank you, guys. Um, Crossing Swords uh, is available on Hulu. Uh, all episodes airing now. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much. It was nice talking to you. You too. All right. Thank you. You too.